What's going on guys? So today I want to make a video talking about 10 myths in fitness. So this isn't in any particular order, but there's a lot of myths, a lot of things that people still believe that just simply aren't true. And through my years of research, hearing from very knowledgeable people, and all of this stuff that I'm going to be quoting to you guys has been researched. Um, there's articles about it. Um, if you want to look further into it, do your research because everything I'm spitting is facts today. So we're going to start off on number 10, artificial sweeteners. So many people have the misconception that artificial sweeteners will give them cancer, will affect the gut microbiome. Just there's so many, you know, negative things that people have to say about artificial sweeteners, but Guys, when it comes down to it, it's not gonna give you cancer. It's much better for you than sugar. So if you use it sparingly, you're not gonna get those sugar cravings. Both have no nutritional value, but if something is gonna keep you from binge eating and being hooked to something that has sugar, something is gonna prevent that, then add that in your diet. Do whatever you have to do, guys. We're not living in the Stone Age anymore. We have all of these things that we can utilize to help take care of ourselves. So artificial sweeteners, if they help keep you away from sugar, they're zero calories and they're gonna do you a service. So use them sparingly. If you want a soda, have a diet soda. So there's just one example of something that has artificial sweeteners in it. So number nine, sodium. People get the misconception that sodium is bad for you. Sure. In excess, it can be bad for you if you have blood pressure problems and stuff like that. But if you're exercising, if you're not just, you know, sitting around, lounging around the house all day, like, you know, eating pizza, if you're eating good quality food, if you're exercising, guys, you need to have that sodium. Sodium, you need it for muscle contractions. Guys, sodium, it helps you with your muscle contractions. It helps you with your nerve function and blood volume, and it also helps you regulate your fluid levels. And guys, you have to push fluid into the muscles, guys. Your muscles are made up primarily of water, so you having that salt is gonna help shuttle that water into your muscles. It's gonna help you get a better pump. So, number eight, test boosters. I've had guys ask me before, hey, what do you think about this test booster? Guys that are, aren't even 20 years old or maybe around 20 years old, and I'm just like, dude, you're literally in your prime. Why would you even think that you need a test booster? Like, it, it makes no sense to me. Um, not only do test boosters not even really do anything to begin with, but if you're in your peak, why would you need that? It's not like it's gonna increase you your peak levels. So that's just stupid, don't waste your money on that. And if you're a grown man in like your 40s to your 50s, and you need something like you have low levels of testosterone, Go talk to your doctor. If your levels come back and they're very low, get prescribed on a low dose TRT so that you can function like a normal man. I mean, it's, it's natural that you're gonna have a decline in your testosterone levels as you get older. So why not just feel better and be able to live life, have energy again, you know? It's huge, it plays such a critical role. Your hormones, if, the, if that's off, man, that really, throws a wrench in your life in a negative way. So, number seven, fat burners. There's been times that I've had people come to me and say, hey, I wanna lose weight, what's a good fat burner that you recommend? Fat burners aren't gonna do the work for you. I hate to say it, but they're just not. The pill isn't gonna replace the work. So a pill isn't gonna do the work for you. You have to put that upon yourself. Fat burners, you know, ones that you might get at GNC, um, such as something like L-carnitine or whatever, you know, they're gonna try to sell you or pitch it to you. It might help decrease your appetite, which could be good, because the less appetite you have, the easier it is for you to stay on track and be within your caloric goals. But it's not like it's gonna increase your metabolism, make you burn like an extra 500 calories a day. That's not how it works, guys. So biggest thing is fat burners, a pill is not gonna replace the work. Guys, you have to have the nutrition under control. Nutrition is everything to weight loss. Number six, you have to bulk to build muscle. Guys, I'm guilty of this myself. 
you know, I've used the off season as an excuse to just be able to eat whatever I wanted to. And I was very unhealthy for it. I didn't have any energy. I just felt terrible. And like, all I wanted to do literally was like sleep. Like aside from sleeping and eating, I didn't really want to do much else. So when you're living your life that way, it's not enjoyable. That's not what you need to build muscle, guys. If you're more than 15% body fat and you're like, oh, I want to build muscle, I got to bulk. Why? What's the point of that? All you're doing is making yourself unhealthy. A healthy body fat percentage for men is anywhere from 12 to, you know, try to be 15. Sometimes people need to be... Some, sometimes there's an exception for people that can't comfortably be at 15% body fat. Maybe it's closer to 20. Anything above 20, it's, you know, you don't want to be above that because you're just going to be just very unhealthy. So the goal is to get as lean as you can with feeling comfortable. The leaner you are, the lower your body fat percentage is, the more insulin sensitive you're going to be. So you have what's called insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. So insulin sensitivity, it's when you're a leaner body fat percentage, you're basically more efficient, you respond better to insulin, i.e. carbohydrates. You know, you get insulin spikes even from like protein, but insulin is the most anabolic hormone in your body. So the more you're sensitive to it, the more you're efficient at absorbing it, the faster you're going to grow, the easier it's going to be to make gains. Guys, why do you think you see these bodybuilding competitors in our shows and some of them do it the wrong way and they'll gain like 20 pounds in three days, which is extremely unhealthy. It's because they're binge eating because they're so starving in the cave. And there's other bodybuilders that do it the right way and they do what's called reverse dieting. So they take their, cal their prep calories and they slowly trickle in calories over the weeks and they blow up. Like the amount of gains that you make off of a super lean shredded body like that is insane. It's because they're so insulin sensitive. So best advice I can give, get to a lean body fat percentage that you can maintain and main gain off of that. So whenever it's time to bulk, go into a 200 to 300 calorie surplus. That's all you need. There's no need to be force feeding and to get really fat. I mean, to get 20 plus body fat percentage, there's no point in that. If you're already a higher body fat percentage, your goal, your primary goal should be to cut down and get to a healthy, lean body fat percentage and then build off of that. You know, even Mr. Olympia, such as like Jay Cutler himself, he says that it's easier to build off of a leaner body. So I'm just quoting what the man said four times Mr. Olympia. What I have next is number five, which is BCAAs. Guys, stop wasting your money on BCAAs. If you like the way they taste, if it helps you drink more water, sure. But why would you spend $30, $40 on BCAAs when you could get like Crystal Light from Walmart for like a couple dollars? Doesn't really make much sense to me, but teach their own. If the reason why I say they're not worth the money, they're a waste of money is because if you're eating protein every meal, just even a little bit of protein, if you're eating protein every meal, there's absolutely no use for BCAAs. You're already getting those amino acids throughout your meals. If you're dieting on very low calories, you might need EAAs, essential amino acids. There's nine of them. Your body does not create them, so they have to be consumed through your diet. So if you're at very low calories, EAAs, you got to have it. I mean, so EAAs are different from BCAAs. So don't get it twisted, BCAAs. Waste the money. Don't buy them. Number four, this myth is that creatine causes muscle cramps. If you know anything about creatine, it increases ATP. It increases your performance. It shuttles, it gives you more water stores. It shuttles water into your muscles. So it makes no sense as to why people would say that it dehydrates you, it causes muscle cramps. You know, I, I even heard this from some of my football coaches. It's not the creatine that gives you the muscle cramps, it's the sodium, the potassium, the electrolyte deprivation. 
So you say you stay supplemented on your electrolytes. Don't worry about creatine giving you cramps. It's not the creatine that's giving you cramps. It's the deprivation. You're not getting enough electrolytes. That's why you're having the cramps. Number three is a myth that I myself even believed. I used to do, and it's fasted cardio. I used to do fasted cardio and I thought, oh, I need to do fasted cardio and I need to do HIIT because boom, best of both worlds, I'm gonna burn body weight super fast. You know, the myth is that fasted cardio burns more fat than regular cardio because whenever you wake up first thing in the morning, you're in a fasted state going without eating for so long that your insulin is gonna be very low. So it's easier for you to burn through your glycogen and immediately attack your fat, your fat stores. So whereas it may be true that your fat lipolysis increases when you're performing fasted cardio, that's only during the session itself. If you do regular cardio in a fed state, you look at it over time and within 24 hours, you're burning about the same amount of calories from fat. So fasted cardio, regular cardio, it doesn't make a difference. Just make sure you get your cardio in. Number two, anabolic window. I believe this myself as well. Oh, I have to have protein within 30 minutes or else, oh, I'm going to lose all my gains. It's not true, guys. Muscle protein synthesis, it's active for up, upwards to 48 hours after you train. So your amino acid sensitivity after you train lasts for about two to three hours. So if you eat before you train, you still have about two, three, maybe four hours to eat. And as long as you get that protein in, you're good. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. But whereas somebody that trains in a fasted state, if you're lifting in a fasted state, you probably need your protein sooner. I would say within an hour or so, hour to two hours. So that's the difference. Number one, man, I see this all the time. It's 2022. Let's throw this myth in the garbage. It's ridiculous. I can't believe that people still believe this. But people do, man, and it just blows my mind the fact that people can't grasp this simple concept, guys. Let's stop living in the Stone Age. It's 2022. People still believe that carbs are bad, guys. Carbs are not bad. I used to believe this a couple years ago because people told me that carbs were bad. And sure, I got pretty shredded off of eating very little carbs, but guys, but the reason why I got shredded wasn't because of the carbs that I cut. It was because of the calories that I cut from the carbs. I was eating high protein meals, some fats, like no carbs, which equates to not very many calories. So carbohydrates are the most readily stormed form of energy. So if you're depriving yourself of that, you're gonna feel like crap in the gym, your pumps aren't gonna be as good, and there's just no need for it. You know, why do you think people lose weight so fast? They yo-yo diet, they lose weight so fast. And then they're just stagnant, they stop losing weight, and then they cave, and then they gain it all back. It's because they cut carbs. Carbs aren't making you fat, calories are. Do something that's sustainable, find a minor calorie deficit that you can follow to where you're not super starving all the time. Follow that, stay on track, eat healthy, eat a balanced diet of protein, carbs, and fats. As long as you're in your calorie deficit, you'll reach your fat loss goals. So that was a mouthful, but I'm just very excited to upload more videos to you guys. Um, I was very excited about this one. I threw this together. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you guys in the next video.